Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I am focusing on how to set up low attacks with one-handed sword, with sword and buckler and with longsword. This topic can be quite long as there can be multiple specific cases, but I will only focus on the basics for now. As a start, what do I consider a low attack? This would be an attack to the lower openings of the body. From Ringe. Here you shall note the four openings on the man, to which you shall always fence. The first opening is the right side, the second is the left side, above one's belt. The other two are also the right and the left side, below the belt. This would usually mean the lower part of the torso and the legs, but I would say that it can also include the hands and forearms, when they are staying in a low position. One could argue that low targets are usually looked at as the lower priority ones. Most sources focus more on cutting and thrusting to the head and to the chest. Our vital organs are there and could result in a quicker defeat of your opponent in a realistic scenario. Attacking the lower targets is usually reserved for actions after the initial attack and often to the bind. In my experience, attacking lower targets also brings one massive disadvantage. Many fencers look at them as less threatening and as something that they can ignore in their defense. This can easily lead to double hits if the low attack is not properly set. Additionally, if the opponent attack is to a higher target and your weapons and overall body portions are similar, there is a good chance that they may reach you while you do not. This is because of the attack angles created and your attack having slightly lesser reach. In this video, I will not argue how valuable those lower openings are or aren't. However, I would like to remind you that the lower part of the torso is not naturally protected by ribs. The inside of our thighs host massive arteries and our entire body structure is dependent on being able to stay on our legs. So, how does one go about attacking the lower openings? I will look at it from two perspectives, as a direct attack and as a follow-up attack. What I mean by direct attack is that you close in the distance either in a static guard or moving your weapons between different positions and at an opportune moment you launch your attack to a low target. I would say that this is usually the more dangerous way and with the higher probability for you also getting hit, especially if your opponent disregards your attack or launches their own at the same time and even more so if their attack is to a higher target. You obviously need very good distance management and timing, as one could say it's a riskier attack. What would help you more specifically is to get your opponent into a bad position and if possible wrong expectations. If you want to target their hands and forearms, their lower position is a benefit to you. You can draw it there by setting yourself in a lower position or make non-dedicated attacks to their lower openings before that. Make them protect their legs, but target their hands. This can also work pretty well, especially with Krumha with longsword. If you'd like to aim for their lower body or legs, you want the opposite. You want to draw them away from the target and place them in a bad position. You can go into a high and threatening guard, swing around strongly at their head before that. Whatever you can to draw their attention away from their lower opening. If their weapon remains in a low position and you attack there, you have very little chance for success. You would prefer to make a few swings to bring their focus away and have a much better opportunity to get where you need to. You will also create a much longer path for their weapon to defend your strike. Here is where I would warn you though not to rely too much on their reactions from previous exchanges that have ended in a blow. On one side, one could say it's a bit unrealistic. Two fencers in a historical context would hardly have the ability to make multiple exchanges that end in a blow unless they are relatively minor hits. But even from today's purely training perspective it is not usually a good idea, as their previous reactions are in no way a guarantee for their next ones. So do get them up and away from your intended target without tipping them off. From there on your attack should be quick and precise while you do your best to move away from their counter. Ideally, after your attack, you will move out of distance, defend yourself with your weapons, hit another target immediately, or a couple of those combined. The specific way and target should depend on yours and their position. 
However, as we start from outside of the bind, I would recommend to focus on cuts rather than trusts. Trusting below can increase the chance of your stopping in your target and being unable to get your sword up for defense or to move away. And as the chance for immediately stopping your opponent with attacks to the legs or lower torso is small, you would need a quick second action. The other way you can consider attacking the lower openings is as a follow-up action. The risk for your opponent disregarding your attack still exists, but is generally no greater than for any other attack. Your follow-up attack can be either as a second attack after your first one, after they've attacked you, or after you've established a bind for some time. Each case has slightly different ways to look into it and I'll go through them quickly. If you've already attacked once, no matter up or down, your opponent has either parry, counter-attack or voided your strike. If they have voided it, you should treat your second attack almost as a direct one, as their sword is at the ready and unless you put them in optimal position, the risk is pretty big. I would say though that this is a relatively good way to hit their hands or forearms if they keep them down and have just voided your first attack. If they have moved their weapons to a different position that opens a good path to you, while avoiding your attack, it can serve you pretty good as well. If they have parried your attack, you should try to understand if they will be countering or trying to parry your next attack too. If it feels like they are trying to parry, this is your chance for a cut below. This works particularly well if you have attacked an upper opening on one side and then moved to the lower opening on the other. However, this could be an expected pattern so you could also try to aim for the lower opening on the same side. This is where I will also mention feints, as they are perhaps the best way to get a hit on low targets. Basic principle is to throw an attack to an upper opening and before it reaches their parry, change through and go for a lower one. Some of the best feints are those that are obvious attacks to an obvious upper opening, reach almost enough to touch the opponent's parry but then immediately go down. This often works quickest on the same side of the body. A good way to feint is to make a real attack but be able to abort it midway and change your attention. I prefer not to feint without having intention in my first attacks as this is the opportune moment for their counter attack. The third option after your first attack is for your opponent to have counter attacked you. Let's assume that you both manage to not hit each other. This is a time I would suggest for you to avoid going for a low opening before you disengage or parry. As their counter attack is working in the same time as your attack, their follow up attack will be in the same time as well. And the chance for getting hit while targeting a lower opening is pretty big. Additionally, if they've counter attacked you and continue their own attack, any type of feint you might try is almost certain to fail. Now let's look at the second variant for a follow-up attack. After your opponent initiated an attack first but didn't hit you. If you've counter-attacked I would say the situation is the same as their counter-attack on your initiation. Don't bother with low openings before a solid defense on either side. If you avoided their first attack you have the perfect opportunity to get back at them. A small window of time before they are able to throw their next swing or be able to defend. You should hit what you can and immediately pull away or defend. If they have brought their sword down in their attack, this is the perfect time to cut at their hands or forearms. Additionally, you should see which side their attack went and go on the other side. And your third response to their attack is to parry it. After a successful parry, in the perfect scenario, you will be directly aimed for a counter strike, for example, with a thrust. However, as you have responded to their action, they will most probably be prepared for your power repost and would be able to address your obvious counter. This is an opportune moment to feint a standard counter to an upper opening and while they are trying to parry it, move below and strike at their lower ones. As this is very taxing on their respawn time, your chances here are pretty good but you still need to be able to move away from their sword, now free to get back at you. The third general way you can do a follow-up attack to a lower opening is after you've established a solid bind with your opponent. This usually means that you are pretty close to them. Q 
who was the initial attacker doesn't really matter in this case, as what we are after is to know that neither party can leave their position without danger. In the best case scenario for you here, you can grab the opponent's sword or arm, or push them away with your guard, buckler or arm, and then thrust or cut below their sword. Trusts here can work pretty effectively even without the arm control, but it generally goes better with it. However, to be able to cut them below without pinning their arms, you need to be able to tread them above, then leave the bind and shame them below. And this is where we get to the specific of using a buckler. Everything said before is just as valid, but there are a few things to note. Every time you attack a lower opening, you should do whatever you can to bring your buckler defending you. In larger distance, this would usually mean standing your hand to take on the cut or thrust that you expect. It can also be placed so to defend your sword arm, as one of their counters to your lower opening attack is to cut directly at your arm. If you've managed to get him to close range or have established a bind, you can bring your buckler to push at their hands or their face. Occupy their attention with the shield so you can freely strike with the sword. Do have in mind that while you can defend their strike with the buckler, they can also do the same with theirs. However, in my experience, trying to stop the low strikes with the buckler is significantly more prone to error. It is relatively easy for your sword to pass around their buckler and find the target. Your expertise in controlling the sword and delivering solid enough blow in this case is paramount, as hitting their buckler first can change your angle and absorb most of the force. You could end up delivering a very low quality and weak hit while receiving a powerful strike to your own upper openings. And now for some specifics on using the longsword. As you grip the handle with two hands, you have a large variety of ways to attack, and some of them can be pretty far reaching. But this is mostly true for attacking upper openings, which leaves attacks to the lower openings even more exposed for a counter. Even though the same principles apply, I would say the risk for going below with longsword in most cases is greater than with one-handed weapons or sword and buffer. One exception to this could be going for a thrust to a lower opening from a bind, as the body mechanics allow you to have pretty solid control over your opponent's sword. However, one should not forget that they can and sometimes should release one of the hands and use it to establish control. And speaking for using the longsword with one hand, one could also do it in large distance. This gives additional reach to the weapon and can sometimes surprise the opponent. I personally prefer to let go with my non-dominant hand and use the sword as a one-handed one for a strike or two, and it can work pretty well against hands and forearm. The other option is to let go of the dominant hand and hold the sword near or at the pommel with the other and strike at your opponent's legs. Returning to a two-handed grip and powering your opponent's attack or repost afterwards can be challenging and should be trained a lot so you are able to perform it properly. Even though you have bigger range this way, you should have in mind the principles I've stated previously, for if you haven't set up the attack well, you will get easily parried or counterattacked. So this is the basic principle of searching for an attack to a low opening. If you have more interest in this topic, you could visit my colleague Borisław Krzysztof's workshop in Greece at the end of May this year, as he will address some more specifics. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video and do let me know if you have any questions. Till next time!